good luck makes no sense if there's no bad luck. It's far more important to be interested than to be interesting. It would be a betrayal. How could you be blue when I am suffering so badly? <laughs> Hi, Jane. Oh, well, thank you so much. I mean, I tried to level it up for you. I mean, let's go. Thank you. I'm super excited to talk with you about luck. You sure have bad luck, Sam Greenfield. This is where good luck is born. The tiniest amount of bad luck can shut down our entire operation. Mm -hmm. Just how unlucky are you? Ah! Oh, oh no. Ah! Oh, super duper unlucky. You cause a disaster. Ah! In this film, you obviously voice the character of Babe, the CEO of Good Luck. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit more about your character? She's vain. She's kind of flirtatious. I think she's maybe a little ambivalent about the smoke and fire that she breathes. You know, I wanted her to use her tail like a boa. I had a vision for how she jumped into a tube and she's fascinated by Sam and she jumps through the tube. And then I said, and have her come back up and take a second look at Sam and wink at her. That was my idea. And I know that that's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, there's that little wink that you do at the end. It's, am it's amazing, actually. And I think all of those characteristics definitely come through. I was actually very curious about this because I love when in an animated film, the voice actor is sort of like their human characteristics are sort of brought into this character. So would right. you say that like a, a dragon is your spirit animal or is there like an, another animal that would better suit your personality? Well, my no, ba a bear. <laughs> because, you know, I'm very much a loner. You know, I, I the idea of hibernating is very appealing to me. I like to just disappear and be alone. It's why I'm one of the few people that the pandemic, I liked the pandemic. I didn't have to come up for excuses about why I wanted to be alone. Um, but when the bear comes out of hibernation, the bear wants to play. Yeah. The bears are very playful. So I identify with the bear. Um, <laughs> And and I like owls, too. But no, I don't. Um, I meditate and I have a mantra. And that's kind of my go to place when I need to bring up good luck, clarity, good thoughts, etc. Amazing. So, I mean, I've heard you explain luck or the concept of luck as preparation meeting opportunity. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. You know, there's a lot of people who. An opportunity can come along and they don't even know it's there. They don't even see it. You know, it's like they have duct tape over their eyes or they see it, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to seize the opportunity and use it. And usually that's because of issues that they carry as individuals, either because of addictions or depression or what how their parents treated them, whatever. The issues that make us the way we are, that we have to really work hard to overcome, that's the preparation. It's working on your personal issues so that when luck or opportunity comes along, you know how to seize it and use it. That makes perfect sense for someone who might be struggling to find those opportunities or just see those opportunities. You would say this kind of work on yourself personally. In a way, I say that also because I want to destigmatize issues. We all have issues, mental health issues, especially now that's a big problem. You know, admit it and seek help. Absolutely. 100%. I appreciate that so much because, you know, it's, we've come a very long way as a society about being able to talk about therapy and it not being this thing where you want to make someone feel horrible about it or, you know, stigmatize it because that's just, it, everyone should be going to therapy, in my opinion. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I think do. it's a great place. Yeah. I agree. I so agree. I appreciate that. So thank you for being an advocate for that. Mental health yeah. is important, people. <laughs> <laughs> So coming back to the film, in short, the main theme can sort of be boiled down to bad luck can't really exist without good luck, right? Sort of like a yin and yang. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, silence and noise. It's like life and death. Life yeah. makes no sense if there's no death. Um, good luck makes no sense if there's no bad luck. And they go together symbiotically. They're the opposite sides of the same coin. And you have to learn to love them, just like you have to learn to love your shadow. You know, there's another 
quote that I love, God doesn't come into us through our successes and our awards. God comes into us through our wounds. What is it about that particular quote that really sings to you? Well, because I know it's true. I, mm. I know that my, you know, that my ability to have empathy, compassion, activism, things like that, it comes through the pain and the wounds that I've received in the course of my life. Absolutely. I mean, with that in mind, can you think of a time in your life when you experienced something that you thought was either good or bad luck, but it actually turned out to be the opposite? My second divorce. Okay. My second divorce, I had a nervous breakdown. I couldn't talk above a whisper. I couldn't walk except very, very, very slowly. I was in a, and it wasn't even a particularly good marriage, but for some reason it triggered tr deep, deep things in me. And I, I fell apart. I really did. I mean, it was like, I remember I if I stepped outside and the sky was blue, it would be a betrayal. How could you be blue when I am suffering so badly? I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. And every, all my friends said, stay busy. And I knew I shouldn't. I knew it was the opposite. I'm always busy, that I should be very still. I should be very careful who I was with, the kind of music I listened to. I should kind of like stay close to the wall because it's in these moments where you think you're dying that little tendrils of new growth begin to show. And you have to be quiet to allow them to emerge and you have to recognize them and honor them while they're still young and precious. And it was like out of that horrific pain. I, I mean, I didn't all the cliches like heavy heart. My heart weighed 30 pounds. You know, I felt like blood was coming through my skin and it was visceral. And out of all that came profound transformation for good. I mean, as a fellow divorcee, I can actually relate to a lot of what you're saying. I've had, it, it was a really terrible time, you know, and then you kind of, everyone's giving you all of this advice and, you know, you ultimately know what's best for you. And then yeah. I think, you know, in the moment, you don't necessarily think that it's a good thing for you, but coming out of it on the other side, you realize yeah. that you did the best thing. You have thing. to think about it as a, a fertile void. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's this in between place where you don't know who you are anymore and that doesn't matter <laughs> but it's fertile you know it's like i learned from some uh, scientific environmental scientists that the richest places environmentally is the edges of different ecosystems is where one kind of ecosystem meets a different ecosystem. That area is where the most surprising richness happens in nature. And in a way, it's true with the fertile void. You've left one state of being and you don't know what the next one is. And all of this invisibly is happening in here, this fertilization. And you have to be very still and allow it to happen. That's such amazing advice. Um, my final question for you is you've had the most incredible career and obviously have garnered fans from different backgrounds across multiple generations. What would you say you attribute your staying power to? First of all, health. <laughs> totally. You don't, when you're young, like you are, you don't recognize the importance of health. My father died six years younger than I am now. He died five months after On Golden Pond finished, and he seemed so old, so old. And he was six years younger than me because he was sick. I'm not sick. I mean, I, you know, I've got fake hips, fake knees, and a fake shoulder, <laughs> but I'm not sick. So health is one thing. Good posture. Totally. <laughs> I can look real old like this, but the other less visible thing is curio curiosity. You know, it's far more important to be interested than to be interesting. You have to stay interested. You have to stay curious. You have to stay learning. And, uh, and that's what keeps you young and keeps you, uh, uh, 
au courant, you know, valid. Exactly. Jane, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, but I am getting the hard wrap on my end. So I've got to cut this short. <laughs> this always happens to me. It was nice to talk to you. Good luck. Stay safe. I found an actual lucky penny. Something that could finally turn my life around. Yes, 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 yes. And what did I do? I flushed it down the toilet. You flushed my panty down the toilet! <gasps> you just... talked. <gasps> Always with the obnoxiously long password. Ah! Ah! Humans cannot be here! Where's here? The land of luck. I'll leave as soon as you give me another lucky penny. You best start blending in. Hello. <laughs> Mighty Leprechaun Fräulein! Well done, nature! This is where good luck is born! A dragon? She's the only creature that can sniff out bad luck. There's bad luck here too? Good luck on top, bad luck on the bottom. The tiniest amount of bad luck can shut down our entire operation. Mm -hmm. Just how unlucky are you? Ah! Oh! Oh no! Ah! Duper, duper unlucky? You cause a disaster. Ah! <gasps>